Hey fish friends. So, for a period of about two years, year and a half I guess, I don't know. I live two hours away from the closest fish store that sold RODI water and I was renting so I didn't want to buy a RODI unit and mount it somewhere. I mean I know there's portable ones which we'll talk about that at the end, things like that. But I just didn't want to fool with it because I was renting, you know, space was limited, things like that. Setting up my own RODI unit and just two hours away from somewhere that sold RODI water so that really wasn't practical to go buy once a month, like buy 50 gallons or something, I guess could do make that work. Um, so what I did was, and what a lot of reefers do, is I bought, I would just buy filtered water from the grocery store. Um, I started off doing these one gallon jugs. This, this is Target brand, um, but most stores kind of have the same variants. They have distilled water, which this is steam distilled and ozonated. The ozonated parts, um, not really important for our application, but I guess if you want totally pure water with no bacteria or anything in it for your baby or um, whatever, or your medical device. Then you have regular purified water, so this is just processed by advanced filtration, aka probably like carbon and like a sediment filter and reverse osmosis. So this is just RODI water without the DI part. And then eventually I switched because uh, I felt bad throwing away like going through like 10 or 15 of these a month for my 27 gallon tank I had at the time between water changes and top off water. And so I switched to uh, these little five gallon jugs that you can buy and then replace. It's actually the most expensive option. Um, this is RO water that they then add some minerals back in for taste. So my question was, do any of these have phosphates, which is the big thing you wanna not have in your water that you're mixing salt water with or doing top offs with? So I started off by testing just my tap water at my house. I use the, the, the HANA low range checker. Um, if you don't have a phosphate checker, I would recommend actually getting the HANA low range instead of the ultra low range. I do have both because I didn't realize this at first that if you want to test fresh water, um, the low range one is good for fresh water and marine water. The ultra low range is only for marine um, and it's the difference in specificity um, of the test really isn't that significant. So I tested my tap water with Hanna Low Range Phosphate Checker. Just these pool test strips, obviously not the most accurate thing in the world. Uh, the main thing was to test for chlorine, but since it gives me a reading, uh, the ALK, alinity in parts per million, and also the pH. And finally a TDS meter, because obviously if the TDS is zero, uh, the phosphate should be zero, unless one of your tools is misreading. Um, so my tap water, the TDS is 164, the alkalinity is 120 parts per million, the pH was 7.4, the chlorine level was like somewhere between 0.1 and 0.5, and the phosphates were 0.61. That was pretty surprising to me. I did not expect it to be that high. And then I just tested the water, ran through my fridge's carbon filter, which I actually did replace pretty recently. So it's a fresh carbon filter. It brought the TDS down to 111, the ALK was still 120 low, um, the chlorine was down to zero, and the phosphates was only dropped slightly. It was actually within the margin of error of the test to like 0.57. So basically the phosphates were unaffected. Moving on to our grocery store water options is um, the distilled water. This is steam distilled, so you definitely expect this to not have anything left in it. And sure enough, the TDS was zero, chlorine zero, phosphate zero, um, pH was like 6.8. Purified drinking water, so just our RO water out of a jug. The TDS was 1, but the phosphates were still 0. Chlorine 0, of course. pH was like 6.8 again, and the alkalinity was 0. Now, this was the one I was most kind of skeptical of, maybe having some phosphates or something in it. Because uh, of course they add that calcium and 
couple other trace elements in for the taste part of it. The TDS was 17, um, but the phosphate still read zero. I checked it twice actually, it was zero both times. The pH was like 6.8 still on the strip, but the alkalinity was 20 parts per million, somewhere around 20 parts per million. Um, obviously if you have a reef tank, I would probably, you know, use a more specific test to figure out exactly how much calcium and stuff I'm adding so that I can add that into my dose calculations. It's not a significant amount, but it's something. I mean, I had basically a Fowler tank with like one or two soft corals in it and used this stuff. Um, I never had any problems with my pH going out of whack. I really honestly didn't even like test things like my alk or calcium because I only had one or two soft corals. I just kind of would test my pH and my nitrates once a month to make sure they weren't crazy out of control. So the good news is if you need an alternative water source and don't want to buy your own RODI unit or don't have space for one and there's no fish store around you, these are good options and honestly they don't cost a whole lot more than what most fish stores will charge you for RODI water. And of course option D is to get like a small portable RODI unit. Uh, I actually bought one of those and returned it like the RODI buddy or whatever. I just didn't like it. It was so hard to keep it from leaking and things like that and breaking it up and taking it down to like make water was a hassle. So what you can buy is one of these there's another brand that makes pretty much the same thing now, these zero water filters, where it's just a filter that takes your TDS down to zero. So of course, you're not gonna have any phosphates left in the water. Um, I think, you know, depending on your source water, you're gonna get 10 to 15 gallons out of one filter, and at that point, your TDS will start reading around two. What you can do to really extend the life is get a second filter, and so you filter it through one, and then filter it through the second, and by the time it gets to the point where your second filter is reading one or two TDS, you remove that filter, switch it to the first uh, stage of your little filtration setup, and put a new one on your final stage, a brand new filter on there. And that's really gonna give you a really long life out of one of these getting super low TDS readings. Obviously that's very time consuming. I just, um, I just had one of these, I really only, I just had one, I do have two now. Um, but I just had one and I only did that for like, you know, like an emergency or it's like, oh, I just need a little bit of half a gallon of water to hold me over until I run to Kroger's or wherever. It's nice to have that option. So, um, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe if this video was helpful for you. And if you have any questions, comments, put them down below.